Okay, Ria, just do a moment like this now. Uh, open your palm. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, it, it will paint now like this. Uh, okay, okay. It looks fine. You recovered very fast, huh? <laughs> okay. I'll just prescribe you for medicines, then uh, continue with them for a week. And I think then you'll be fine to play with your friends. Huh? But just be a little bit careful about that. Okay, sure. doctor. Yeah. Uh, so, the last time I was here, you explained to me the various kinds of diseases. Hmm. And then later on, I went and stayed with my friends. Okay, that's like a good girl. Then your friends must have appreciated your knowledge. huh? Yes, they did. Okay. But they asked a few questions which I could not answer. Okay. Uh, do you mind if I asked you those questions? Yeah, sure. It would be my pleasure to answer your and your friends' questions. <laughs> I mean, it will improve your knowledge about diseases and human health. So, please do ask. Last time you explained to me that some diseases are congenital that are present by birth, while some diseases are contracted by us when we interact with the environment are called as acquired diseases. Yes, that's right. And doctor, I also told you about my friend Nisha and she was unwell due to fever and cold and was advised to stay away from other healthy children. You also explained to me that Nisha had acquired an infection which could spread to others so she was not even allowed to mingle to attend school or to even play with us while well, I had acquired an injury and I was suffering from a fracture a disease that could not spread to other healthy children so I was allowed to mingle with everyone that's right too Ria but I don't see what is your question or doubt huh, so my friends asked me uh -huh. what was the difference between an acquired infectious disease and an acquired injury and even I didn't understand that well. Oh. So, can you explain it to me? Well, we never went into those details that day, right? <laughs> Don't worry. I'll explain it to you. Just give me one minute. Hello? Yeah, how many patients are waiting outside right now? Uh-huh. Okay, okay, okay. Just send them after 15 minutes. Yeah? Thank you. Yeah. We can continue now. Mm, doctor, are you sure? If there are patients outside, I can wait. No, no, no. That's absolutely right. So yeah, I'll explain it to you. Okay, doctor. Please begin. Okay. So basically, acquired diseases are classified into two groups based on their ability to spread through population from deceased person to healthy people as follows. So now the first type is uh, infectious or communicable diseases. These diseases are caused by biological agents of disease which are called as pathogens. The term pathogen has a very interesting origin. It originates from pathos, a Greek word meaning suffering or feeling sadness which normally happens when we are unwell, ill or feeling sick. So, the term pathogen can be described as agent generating suffering in from sickness or disease. That is pathos generating agent. Now, in other words, pathogen is causative agent of disease belonging to one of the groups of organisms like bacteria, protists, fungi, parasitic worms or viruses. We also commonly use the term infections for diseases caused by such infectious organisms or pathogens. Doctor, so these diseases can spread when pathogens or infectious agents are transmitted from a diseased person to a healthy person? Exactly, Ria. Now see, as these diseases are caused by microorganisms or viruses, they can be easily transmitted from infected person to healthy people in many ways. And for the very same reason, infections are also termed as communicable diseases. The spread of pathogen and so the disease can happen when healthy person comes in physical contact or in close contact with secretions or tissues of deceased person directly or indirectly by using infected objects like brush, comb, clothes of deceased person. Now, contamination of food, air and water by pathogens is also responsible for spreading these diseases amongst large populations. So, is it right to define a communicable disease as a disease that are formed by pathogens and can spread from a diseased person to a healthy person easily? Absolutely correct. You are a very bright child, Ria. So, now shall we continue? Just one question. Uh -huh. Can you please tell me more about the different types of pathogens? Uh, yes. In fact, the infectious or the communicable diseases are grouped into five categories based on the nature of the causative agent or the pathogen. Okay. I'll show you a few charts and images. Now, see, the first one is bacterial diseases. 
These diseases are caused by pathogens which are prokaryotic unicellular microorganisms belonging to group of bacteria. Tuberculosis, leprosy, typhoid, cholera, syphilis, tetanus are few examples of bacterial diseases in humans. The second one would be protozoal diseases. These diseases are caused by pathogens which are eukaryotic unicellular microorganisms belonging to the group of protists. Amoebiasis, malaria, sleeping sickness, toxoplasmosis are few examples of protozoal diseases in humans. The third one is fungal diseases. The pathogens which cause these diseases are either unicellular or multicellular eukaryotic microorganisms belonging to group fungi. Common fungal diseases in humans are ringworm, athlete's foot or uh, candidiasis to a name few. Now the fourth one is uh, hemanthic diseases or worm infections. The pathogens responsible for these diseases are multicellular tiny worms mainly belonging to groups of parasitic animals termed as platyhelminthes, flatworms example tapeworm, liver fluke etc. Ascalimenthes, roundworms example ascaris, pinworms, hookworms etc. Ascariasis, filariasis, elephantiasis, tyniasis are few examples of helminthic diseases in humans. And the fifth one is the viral diseases. Now the viruses are non-cellular infectious entities that are obligate intracellular parasites. Hence they are capable of infecting variety of cell types belonging to different living beings. Influenza, Hepatitis, AIDS, Dengue, Rabies, Chickenpox or Malays are few examples of viral diseases affecting human beings. Now does that answer your question Ria? Yes it does doctor. Now I understand very well that Nisha who is probably suffering from a viral infection was advised to remain at home so that the virus causing the infection does not spread to other healthy people who come in contact with her or her things while she is suffering from the disease. Also like a few years ago our schools had declared a holiday in the middle of the term when the epidemic of swine flu. Okay. I'm sure it was done to prevent the disease from spreading in population.